Around the globe, we have more and more regulations in the end-of-life situation on manufacturers where they have to take care according to extended producer responsibility of the products in end-of-life. So when there are collection targets and the producer has to prove that he has taken care of properly of a certain amount of products, he has the obligation of also taking back the products. Supply chain innovation is the part of looking at reverse not as a must in the way of I'm obligated, I have warranty returns, I need to take care of that. It's much more looking at how can reverse be an enabler for me. On the one hand, yes, I have to fulfill obligations. I have to take care of environmental um, treat things. But at the same time to say, I want my products back because it has value to me to get them back from a material recovery perspective, maybe. If the material recovery is not the point, it could be also parts harvesting and for my repair channels and everything to get value out of these streams and reuse products in my own streams and controlled way again, not leaving it to others to do that in an in transparent mode maybe. We're always looking into what else is around that reverse process and how can you use reverse to enhance your business models overall and to think about well, if a customer wants to return something, if it's a consumer out there, I have a touch point with a consumer that gives me much, much more possibilities than only saying, well, he's got a defective product and he wants to return it. So it's about how can I enhance customer experience through a good service. Motivation initially was become more independent from primary raw material streams through reusage of material out of end-of-life products that are out there and that I have delivered into the market myself. It has developed over time exactly into a virtual ownership of the material throughout the whole product life cycle. A limitation today in this process again is you don't know where your products are, you don't know how many you will be able to collect back. Changing business models from not selling products anymore but renting products out, looking into pay-per-use models, will create a total new dynamic out in the market and create an enormous need for reverse processes. Asset tracking in the way of having one product identified with like a serial number, but then having the additional information of saying, I know where it went to, I know at which location it is today, I know who is using my product, I most probably even know for what it is being used in that situation. So is it a consumer that has a computer, for example, only in his home? Or is it a business that is using my product out there in, under a certain condition and for a certain time? And then the asset tracking again of saying I have a lease, a rental agreement behind that with my consumer and I know when that runs out. So I know exactly the point of time when I will get that product back. It will make overall products cheaper because we have a planable situation and we know how to recover the value out of the products. Even if it is only material recovery as the lowest level of recovery that we're looking at, still you can fully optimize that process and you even have an incentive as a manufacturer of saying, how do I design my product? Because I know I will get it back and I will get the benefit at an end of life. The total cost of reverse activities that are done as of today are mostly not visible because they're all spread out in an organization. You have part of it that is captured in the sales department and taking care of these things. You have other parts that are run by the service department. And then finally you have people taking care of compliance. Only very rarely we see companies that have pulled that all together and have a full understanding of their total cost. So through this, they also don't see, well, how can I really optimize factors to shifting it into greater volume. And through this achieving scale are on the one hand consumer behavior, on the other hand, manufacturers understanding that it makes sense to increase volume and to take products back and incentivize the return of products even as of today, even if they don't have a full cradle-to-cradle -cradle concept or a full closed loop already as of today thinking about what are the advantages of bringing it back and through this scaling it by incentivizing returns.
First of all, it has to be a strategical element. Looking at reverse not as a must, looking at reverse as an opportunity to integrate it in your own business concepts and through this open new roads of interaction. It is about customer retention. It is about a brand recognition and, and all of these strategic elements where a business leader should think about, yes, how can I differentiate myself through reverse activities compared to others and through this get a business advantage. Another part is thinking about out of the box. Reverse works differently. Structure your process outside of your forward processes and then see where are the interconnections that you need to build it up to then finally get to the point of saying also my systems are a closed loop.